Hi, this is Robert Rice, and again, I'm making another video, but it's going to be a little different than what I normally do. Uh, my main thrust and my main motivation is to see people come to the Lord, either for the first time or to return to the Lord again. You know, my, my main goal is to return people to the Lord or to, re or to bring them to the Lord for their first time to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him uh, and in believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to follow through with that belief it's not a medical uh, mental assertion or anything like that it, it, it's an actual belief if you believe that a chair in the room is going to hold you up when you sit down in it you go sit down in it you don't go and stand somewhere you know your belief produces an action and what that does is that brings repentance if you if you truly believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and for the sins of the world and that by the shed blood of Jesus Christ uh, on the cross uh, and his death on the cross paid for those sins it should have something inside of you come out in repentance to tell God I'm sorry for what you had to put Jesus through I'm sorry he did that for me so that I can have life and have it more abundantly that's why he rose from the dead so this is my goal, is to return people back to God, either for the first time or if you have backslidden and fallen away, come back to him. And you do this through repentance. And also, if you have never uh, been through this before, to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. That's not only was a commandment, given in Acts chapter 2, but it was followed through the book of Acts as this is what an example of what the apostles did and what they preached. And also to receive the Holy Ghost just as they did on the day of Pentecost. Not just on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 that very same day, not just the 120 sitting in the, in the upper room, but it was three thousand that one day had this salvation experience and the whole early church was built upon this upon the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone so this is what I'm trying to get people back to uh, it's not so much about well, this is what my church teaches, or this is what my church teaches, you know. Uh, well, we, we don't teach such a thing because we don't believe in that, you know. Uh, whatever. The Bible says it's there. The Bible says to do it. You do it. I don't care what your theology is. Jesus came by on his day when he was walking the earth. He came by and he challenged the theology of, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they were not doing what Moses said to do their high priests were not Levites the sons of Aaron so here's they had morphed into something that was not what they were supposed to be and that was done out of necessity during the Babylonian exile this is what I'm interested in is to return people back to God because without God you have nothing it is by his grace that you have the breath to breathe that your heart beats that your blood flows it is by his grace and his grace only but that's not why this video is here. That's why not why I'm doing it, actually. I read in a Fox News report, you know, that John Podesta had uh, 
uh, again was making a headline that you know well it was the Russians that hacked the hacked the emails you know and that's what all the problem is all about well you know I have to tell you John and I'll provide the link for this below uh, in the uh, description uh, for the for the story so you can actually see it it wasn't the Russians John Podesta it wasn't the Russians Barack Obama it wasn't the Russians Hillary Clinton it wasn't the Russians all you whining Democrats it wasn't the Russians this wasn't an inside American leak to Julian Assange this is all a distraction and if you once you can look past all of this this is a distraction in the military a lot of times what people do or what 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 the commanders will do they will do what's called a spoiling attack and it's not a serious attack this is just to get you to get your attention to another area before they come up with a uh, with their main force somewhere else As, this is exactly what that is this is a spoiling attack is to get your attention away from where your focus needs to be it's like Pizzagate it, 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 it was just something to distract you while something else was going on and that's what you need to do you the sensational headlines you know well they're well and good and they may tell a story but a lot of times they're to get you to focus your attention it's called herd mentality the herd mentality is where they get you to do something and everybody stampedes like a herd. Like a herd of buffalo. Boom, 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 boom. Go down, go go run for a couple of miles until you're tired and you're weary. And then guess what? That's when they come and kill you. That's when the buffalo died. They got tired. They stopped running. And that's exactly what's going on right here. You 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 got to fully understand. And you have to look at the strategy of what is going on. This is a herd mentality that they're trying to do. <clears throat> they're trying to herd people. But this is not Russia. I know it's not Russia. Assange went on record and stated that these emails were not brought to him from any government outside of the United States. There was no state government, whether it's Russia, China, Germany, Israel, Saudi Arabia, whatever. They were not brought to him from any other country. So get that in your head. There is no evidence that it was done that way. However, there is evidence that there is someone either within the Democratic National Convention or someone within the federal government maybe a bureaucrat I don't know but the evidence is pointing that there's someone within the government that is responsible for this has it ever occurred to you that there were probably many and I mean many within our own government that would do anything to stop a communist socialist takeover of the United States has it ever occurred to you that there are going to be many working in our federal government that actually love and respect and take their oath of office seriously to protect the Constitution of the United States of America and the Bill of Rights has it ever occurred to anybody that somebody did this because somebody is trying to circumnavigate the constitutional authorities or the Constitution as it is written or to circumnavigate the Bill of Rights. Has it anybody ever thought about that? So they throw out, well, this is the Russians. So that you don't see what they're doing. Obama wanted to change America into a Chinese style socialist system with a with a religion. He wanted that religion to be Islam. 
Now, this was Obama's mission when he said he wanted to fundamentally change America. This was his political view. And if you ever, if anybody ever read his book, they would understand that he comes from a very Marxist socialist background. Those are the kind of people that he hung around. And then his claim of Islam, and he made a very important statement back when he was first elected the first time. He said, I need to do this for the redemption of my soul. Now he's incorporating politics and now he's incorporating religion. So he wanted a communist style, socialistic style, modeled after China with Islam as its religion. All you have to do is look out there and just go through the past eight years of history and see what he's been doing. See what he's doing. Who has he placed in his cabinet? Who has he placed in positions within the bureaucracy? Who is, who are these people and where do they come from? What do they believe? What do they teach? This is what we as Americans have to do. You have to show your government that you are not going to tolerate anything that's going to go beyond the Constitution to restrict people's rights under the Bill of Rights because those are immutable or to circumnavigate the Constitution to try to give someone more power within our form of Republican government to than they should have. No one's supposed to have any greater power than the other powers. You know, you have your executive, your judicial, and your uh, legislative branches, and they all share power equally. They all have checks and balances to each other. They are never, never, never supposed to just rubber stamp anything. Obama said he wanted to fundamentally change America. Both Obama and Clinton are hardcore socialists and communists. Both have the same mentors by the name of Saul Alinsky. Saul Alinsky was a communist. In fact, he wrote a book on how to destroy a nation based upon Karl Marx's work the Communist Manifesto. Socialism always leads to communism and despotism and tyranny. There is no such thing as a socialist utopia. No such thing. It will never happen. And the reason it will never happen is because they do not figure in the human condition. You say, well, you only allowed this much food to eat for the day. And then you give somebody else a little bit more, and you say you're allowed only this much food to eat for the day. And I look over there and I say, how come you gave him more? They look at me and say, well, you know, he's a little bit heavier than you. I say, so? Everybody's equal, right? Everybody gets the same, right? And then I look over and then I see... A ton of wheat being sent to the ruling palace. Well, why do they get more? Well, you know, they have more responsibility. Really? I thought we were all equal. There's no such thing as a utopian human form set up government that is going to be some utopia where we're all going to go tiptoe through the tulips and 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 and, and singing songs. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. This is not Sound of Music. So, socialism always brings birth to communism and communism 
to despotism and oligarchical rule and tyranny in which there was there's no freedoms for anyone except for those who are at the very top and they get they of course they get all the best food they get they get everything now true government begins with self-governance as Christians we govern ourselves through the Word of God and the empowerment of the Holy Ghost but even the non-believer has a measure of ability to govern themselves now there is an innate understanding of what is right and wrong and that's given to us from the time of conception this understanding this it's just basic understanding and it is called the conscience but when people choose to not govern themselves rightly then a governmental system is set up that's why we have governments because people cannot govern they choose not to govern themselves rightly they want to do what's right in their own eyes but what's right in one man's eyes is not right in another man's eyes and you know one man may think well I think I need to kill you so I can take your horse it's right in my eyes to do that so you know I want your horse you know uh, this madness I, I think they call it um, moral relativism today but it's basically the word for hedonism which means doing what pleases you uh, without regard to what happens to other people and so so governmental systems are set up because man himself will not govern himself rightly and socialism has never worked it, it always implodes under its own weight the Soviet Union collapsed for that reason China was on the verge of collapsing when the British handed over Hong Kong back to China and actually <coughs> it was Hong Kong that saved the Chinese from total collapse because Hong Kong was a market economy it, it, it was a capitalistic market economy that made money and the Chinese didn't have any money in fact their 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 yuan is not worth anything in the world so you can go and get all the yuan you want but it's not worth anything so that's what saved China from total collapse otherwise China's would have already total totally collapsed Europe is now facing this same collapse under the EU because of socialism I mean you gotta look at Greece look at Spain look at Italy look at France look at Germany Belgium all the countries that are within the EU and I think there's something 20 some odd they're all under this socialistic rule and now the EU is about to fold and collapse because of this socialism Britain and now Italy have chosen to leave the EU and this is because they cannot afford to continue down and throw their money into the whole into the black hole of socialism it's that's what it is it's a black hole it just sucks everything in Britain and Italy want to take charge of their own destinies again and they should socialism and communism says that people are too stupid to take care of themselves and the government needs to take care of the people actually what happens is is the ruling elite take care of themselves because the people become slaves for that oligarchical rule this is what is happening in Venezuela now the people are starving they're catching pigeons in the park to eat meanwhile the the ruling class over there are having steak and lobster so what's wrong with this picture is that socialism yes it's socialism I hate to tell you that's socialism in a republic 
which the United States was founded, the individual is sovereign. That means I'm sovereign, you're sovereign. We're sovereign as individuals. The individual is responsible for his or her own success or failure. So if a person chooses to stay poor and live off other people through welfare and entitlements, then that is the choice that they have made. The U.S. government for the last 50 years has had in place very good programs for people to take advantage of, to train themselves, go to college, get their high school diploma, etc., etc., to pull them out of poverty. Remember, in a republic, it is up to the individual to determine their own path and to determine their own success or failure. It is not up to the federal government to feed the poor through entitlements for generations and generations. Entitlements, when they were started back in the uh, 1930s because of the Great Depression, the entitlements were meant to be a temporary help to help that person until that person was able to work again. And then he comes off and he, and he gets his money through his work. Socialists, and Bernie Sanders is an admitted socialist, want people to depend on the government for their sustenance. Now that dependency fuels their the socialist communist ideological belief that people are too stupid to take care of themselves. We are guaranteed by this republic that the government shall not infringe upon the life, the liberty, the pursuit of happiness and property, which is that which has been legally obtained, and to promote, quote unquote, the common welfare. This means that the government will encourage and support the means necessary for the success of its people. The government is not to take care of us. We are to take care of ourselves and each other. And the government is to promote that. This is the meaning uh, and the intent of promote the common welfare. The election, this last election, was about nationalism versus globalism. This election was about individual rights versus governmental intrusion upon those rights. This election was about returning to the original intent of the founders and the Constitution. This election was about liberty versus slavery. This election was about reestablishing personal responsibility for each person's success or failures. If you want to be poor, then let that be your own decision. But then you are now faced with the consequences of your decision. If you want wealth and you are poor, then the government has provided the means for you to have the tools to obtain that wealth legally. You don't have to go out and sell drugs. You don't have to go out and kidnap or rob banks. All you got to do is just, they got the tools there for you. Just use the tools. But you have to work for it. It's not going to be just given to you. But this elect, this email thing is not, not, not the Russians. It was someone within this own country of ours called the United States of America that promoted in Julian Assange's giving him the giving him the emails someone within our own government someone within the DNC is the one who did this I don't know who did it but that's what happened and Barack Obama I'm sorry if you're gonna spout a lie you've lied to us for eight years I don't believe you 
I don't have any reason to believe you. And you've cried wolf too many times. So even if you are telling the truth, I would not believe you. The Hillary Clinton, I'm sorry, you've lied too many times. You've cried wolf too many times. Even if this was the truth, I would never believe you. So, I have it on good record that this is an inside job. It's not. It's not Russia. And don't be fooled into a military conflict with Russia. Right now, they are highly motivated. Their military is highly motivated. And you put that big juggernaut against a bunch of mamby-pamby, whiny, crying people, the juggernaut will win. Hate to say it. I spent enough time in the military to, uh, to understand that. Think about it. It's not Russia. It's someone within our own government that did this. Thank you.